All right, guys, here we find ourselves approaching the year 2020, and in photography, we're at a pivotal moment as far as gear goes. I want to start this video by suggesting that we all have different needs, and the ideal gear for me is not necessarily the right gear for you. I call for unity between the different types and brands and hope that we all realize that more competition in the marketplace is going to benefit all of us, whether we're buying the newest high-tech equipment or the older gear on the used markets. Before going into the differences between the types, I wanted to first point out the end result of a camera is the same whether you're using a film camera or the newest mirrorless camera technology. The way you get there may be much different, but the destination is basically the same. When you're considering a camera in 2020, there are many factors that to the beginner it may be overwhelming. I would suggest starting with determining your budget and needs and moving toward what kind of equipment are available in your budget and in the area of the world you're living in. For an example, let's say that you need a medium format camera and your budget is very small. You may not be able to afford a digital medium format camera, but looking into the used film camera market, uh, you may find plenty of options that fit your needs. The sensor size or film size is going to play a big role in what gear will fit your needs but maybe the sensor size is not all that important to you and this will expand your options tremendously. Another factor that may make a huge difference to your decision is whether you will be shooting video with the camera you will purchase. The next thing I want to point out is that the camera technology has come a long way in the last decade in both mirrorless and DSLR formats. The sensors improved the low light capability, the battery life, etc. The mirrorless cameras have improved radically since they came onto the scene and the amount of technological advancement in that format seems very promising for the future. There are so many videos on the web on the differences between mirrorless and DSLR that I won't go crazy on all the details but instead provide a real world approach that may help some of you make up your minds on the best way to accomplish your goals. First area we're going to make a distinction between mirrorless and DSLRs is in the size. In order to fully understand this, I'm going to provide a short history here. Many years ago, the main type of cameras in use were rangefinders and twin lens reflex cameras. These had two different lenses or a lens and a viewfinder mounted on or inside of it. One for your eye and one for the film. These cameras had been perfected for many years and had large and small options available depending on your needs and the film size you needed for your photos. Then the single lens reflex design came out. This used a mirror and a single lens to provide you with a viewfinder image as well as exposing the film when the mirror and shutter moved out of the way. The main disadvantage to this design is that the view through the viewfinder would black out during the exposure for each shot. It also took a few years of design improvement before a more compact design would hit the market. Now we jump forward a few decades and the camera manufacturers have started replacing the film cameras with digital cameras. As we all know, many early digital cameras were not always great. They were sometimes slow, with bad sensor and screen resolution, and the short battery life as well. Many of the issues that we have worked to overcome with the DSLRs are the same issues you see in early mirrorless cameras, and much like with DSLR technology, we have worked to overcome them at very rapid rates. Now the issue at hand is whether you need or want a smaller or bigger camera. This can depend on how you want to use your camera and also what type of lenses you'll be using on it. If you're using big long lenses on a camera, there can be some benefit to a larger body that better balances the lenses. This may or may not be an issue for you, but understand that mirrorless cameras can be, but aren't necessarily smaller than a similar format DSLR. Today we are seeing mirrorless cameras generally getting larger to not only fit the hand better, but also to accommodate lenses with wider aperture openings in the future. Also, the lenses designed for the newest mirrorless cameras are generally larger than the DSLR equivalent lenses for different reasons, so the size on many current and probably future mirrorless cameras are not likely to be a big defining characteristic, especially when you're looking at full uh, size sensors. Most if not all compact cameras during the coming decade will probably be all mirrorless cameras. 
For a few of you looking for a truly compact and portable camera, you may find a much cheaper option than a 35mm film format that has the added benefit of not needing to charge batteries for extended trips into remote areas. Another area of comparison between mirrorless and DSLR, which will hopefully not be an issue in the next few years, is the ruggedness and weather sealing of the mirrorless camera bodies. Now they have been improving on this in recent releases and I imagine that soon this will be a non-issue on prosumer and professional level cameras. One other related issue that I hope and imagine will be corrected on all mirrorless cameras is the fact that the sensors open to the elements when changing lenses. At least one of the newer cameras have the shutter curtain closed when the camera is powered off and in my opinion this is a must going forward. Let's hope that all manufacturers will heed this in the next generation. The next thing I wanted to point out is that your decision will probably be different if you're building a camera system from scratch versus if you already have lenses. Many lenses can be adapted to fit your mirrorless camera, however, you will need a different adapter for different brands of lenses and functionality may vary. If you have no lenses currently that you would like to adapt, then you are free to build a system from scratch that fits your needs and budget constraints. Many camera companies are trying to get more profit from the newest generations of lenses designed for their new mirrorless camera offerings in relation to the same equivalent lens for their DSLR lineup. If manufacturers stop making the DSLR lenses, then these new generation higher priced lenses will be the only native option for your camera. Also, these new lenses will not be backwards compatible with your DSLR or film SLR going forward. Make sure you research the uh, specific adapters available and the functionality of the lenses you would like to adapt. The adapters could easily reach a couple hundred dollars for a good one, so you may want to limit the type of lenses you're trying to adapt. The biggest difference that you'll see using a DSLR versus a mirrorless camera is the difference between the optical viewfinder and the electronic viewfinder. The EVF has major advantages of seeing changes in the exposure settings directly in real time in front of your eyes and also no blackout during the exposure itself. It can also display some data directly on the image in your viewfinder that an optical cannot such as focus, exposure, peaking and the like. The optical viewfinder has the advantage of being able to be used without putting a drain on the battery and having an optical image with no lag or resolution issues. The DSLR is also not truly capable of a silent shooting mode which is a huge plus for the mirrorless and generally is capable of more frames per second. There are some differences between the autofocusing capabilities uh, between the two that I'm not going to go into. One final thing I would like to point out uh, and that you should consider is the current economic situation that the camera manufacturers are finding themselves in. The rise of cell phone cameras has destroyed the mass market that used to sustain these large camera companies like Nikon and Canon. The camera companies have now come to rely on the professional and prosumer camera offerings for all of their camera related income. This market segment is so much smaller than what they could previously make before and camera companies are getting desperate to keep the profit margins they once enjoyed. In order to achieve this they need us to buy a new camera and new camera lenses every couple of years and not the 5 to 20 years that was previously common. You will see higher prices and the attempt to move to a planned obsolescence uh, model in the future. My hope is that the camera companies will see the changing reality and downsize their operations and learn to act like the smaller businesses that they need to be in order to stay in business into the future. I personally would like to see more niche related products going forward. More affordable medium format still cameras that offer the viewfinder experience of the ground glass focusing screens of the past for example. Not every product should be tailored to the mass market and not every shooter needs to pay for the whiz-bang wizardry of the newest autofocus systems, IBIS, video modes, EVF, etc. If these big companies don't figure this out, then they will go down and that will be bad for all of us. The cell phone market is only going to get bigger with its expansion into the second and third world countries around the world. 
partnering with cell phone manufacturers may be the only way for the camera companies to get a slice of that pie, like Leica has done with Huawei. As for me personally, there are at least 5 to 10 more years that I plan to stick with the equipment that I have before I'm ready to purchase a new camera. I do believe that mirrorless or hybrid EVF with optical viewfinder systems are the future and my next camera will have much more technology than my current one does. There are a few areas that I will need to see improved before I'm willing to buy one. The battery life in stills mode is my main consideration and as such I would need an optical viewfinder to get two to three days on a single charge before I'd be willing to switch. I have not seen the newest generation of EVFs, but I feel pretty confident that I would want to wait for the optical quality to improve a little bit more. I need an always closed shutter curtain to reduce problems with dust on the sensor and professional weather sealing slash durability. I prefer a straightforward menu system that seems incompatible with all the crazy features on modern DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. Some of my needs are niche and many are a result of me being old enough to remember what it's like to have a simple interface, amazing focusing screen, and manual focus, etc. I am the dinosaur and others my generation and older will probably see their needs going unmet going forward. But I still have hope for the future. If the worst happens and the big companies go down or consolidate, then I will still be the old fart. Searching the used market for old film cameras and Nikon F mount lenses to go on my ancient DSLR. I hope that in five years there will be a new camera that truly meets my expectations. I truly expect many of the features showing up in mirrorless cameras to end up in tomorrow's DSLRs and most likely a hybrid system like the patent by Nikon is clearly suggesting. Anyway guys, I hope this gives you a little bit of insight onto the mirrorless versus DSLR debate and uh, in the year 2020, uh, what you should look at if you're looking at a brand new camera system uh, to purchase. Thanks for watching and uh, feel free if you guys get any questions or anything like that. Uh, I'm sure there's uh, you know, a healthy debate that will happen uh, going forward. Thanks.